to talk to you about worms and parasites in horses. Signs of parasites in your horse may include a dull coat, weight loss, loose manure or diarrhea, lethargy and intermittent colic. <laughs> the types of parasites that we're worried about today in your horse include large strong isles, small strong isles or cyathostomes, roundworms, pinworms, threadworms, bots and lungworms. Parasite control today needs to be tailored to your needs, your horse's needs and where your horse lives. Important terms that you need to be aware of today when it comes to worming your horse are anthelmintic or wormer or drench and resistance. Resistance in drenches refers to when the parasites in your horse are no longer affected by the drench that you use. What we want to do is make sure that you select the appropriate drench for the time of the year for your horse. Parasites are more prevalent in different areas of the country at different times of the year. You need to speak to your local vet or government health official in order to work out what are the best drenches to use at the right time of year. For example, bots are most prevalent at the end of summer, early autumn. So you would need to use a different drench with an ivermectin base, for example, in order to target those bots. Another option is to use a, a moxidectin type drench in the springtime. Also, because that's when your small strong girls may be more prevalent. It also depends on the age of your horse because that will also depend on the type of worms that are most prevalent in the ages of your horses. Some important considerations when worming your horses are pasture management. Make sure that you're not overgrazing. Cross grazing is also really good to consider with sheep or cattle if you have that luxury. Picking up the manure and ensuring that the pasture is rested. When drenching your horse, you need to be aware of how much your horse weighs. Quite often, owners are underdosing their horse. It's actually often better to slightly overdose rather than underdose. Underdosing can lead to resistance. I would like to talk to you about the importance of doing fecal leg counts once, twice, maybe three times a year to at least get an understanding of which horses in your herd are high shedders and which ones are low shedders. A horse that is a high shedder naturally has higher numbers of adult worms in their intestine. Therefore, they are excreting larger number of eggs onto the pasture, which then leads to a higher contamination of eggs on your pasture. So the reason behind finding out which horses are high shedders and which horses are low shedders is so that you can drench your high shedders more frequently and your low shedders less frequently. Therefore, we're not overusing our drenches and leading to resistance. The importance of drenching your horse to the correct weight is extremely important. Drenching your horse to the correct weight means that you're giving them the right amount to kill the appropriate number of worms in their system. If you drench your horse with an inadequate amount of drench, for example underdosing, then you are leading to resistance. You're not killing all of the parasites with the adequate amount. You're giving them a small taste of the drench, which can make them ill, but not necessarily kill them. Drenching your horse to the correct weight is really important. One of the easiest ways to find out the weight of your horse is by using scales. An alternative to scales is the weight tape. Unfortunately, weight tapes aren't as accurate as scales. However, when you are using them, please be mindful to use more wormer rather than less with your weight tapes. We want to make sure that you use more wormer than less to prevent resistance developing in your horse. Horses that require special consideration include your brood mares. For example, they need to be receiving a drench within one month of foaling. The next group of horses that need consideration are your foals. They can be drenched from the age of six weeks of age. From then, foals need to be monitored closely for worms or signs of parasite burden. For example, the dull coat, hot belly, poor growth and, and weight gain. When you wean your foals, they need to be drenched and put onto clean pasture. If you require more specific information on drenching foals to yearlings, then please refer to the website on www.equinedentalvets.com forward slash articles. Some important points to consider when you are wanting to go ahead and drench your horse is to make sure that they've been drenched before or have had some handling around the mouth in preparation to receive the drench. When you're going to give your horses the drench, Make sure their mouth is empty, for example, before they're being fed. 
otherwise sometimes you'll see food covered drench come out the horse's mouth and you'll lose and you would have wasted your for example twenty dollars in drench if you have difficulty drenching your horse speak to your vet and maybe they can help you in some handling with the horse or you can time it in when your horse's teeth is being done remember to read the packaging of your worming drench carefully not all wormers are dosed for the same weight I'm Dr. Suzanne Polak from the Canberra Equine Hospital. If you'd like more information on worming and horses, go to www.equinedentalvet.com or speak to your local horse veterinarian.